Okay, so um, so this is the BeatSource site, BeatSource.com, and um, we launched BeatSource about a year and a half ago. And when we did so, we, we did so with the intention of doing it in three different phases, right? So the first phase um, was a, what this is, which is a um, fully licensed DSP. And what that means is we're a digital service provider, and that puts us in the same level as like a Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music, right? These are all considered DSPs that get uh, have licensing deals with the labels and distribute their music. Mm -hmm. um, so we get that same type of uh, content from the labels. We've signed deals with every major record label and hundreds of indies, and we're adding more weekly, basically. Basically, any kind of label that we feel is um, important to a DJ carries a catalog that the DJ would be interested in. We're actively pursuing those and getting them in the content library. Mm -hmm. um, the difference between us and those other services is that we are curating our content specifically for open format DJs. So what I mean by that is DJs who play a wide variety of music, typically club and radio guys that, you know, you, you guys know what I mean when I say open format. Um, so, you know, whereas those other services are kind of catch all for, you know, all music uh, for general consumers, we are specifically curating our library for DJs. And we do that in a couple different ways. The, the first way is with the genres that we're focusing on. So if you click on this genres tab here, you'll see that there are six main genres that we really focus on. And that's dance, hip hop, Latin, pop, R&B, and reggae and dance hall, which actually also includes Afrobeats. Um, now that's not to say we don't have other genres on the service. We have a, a ton, but we're, we're focusing on these six because uh, we felt that this was like a general catch-all for a majority of the music that we all play as DJs. So, you know, you'll see that we, we've got all the new releases of the week from every major record label. Um, this is the 20 where every week we're curating and highlighting the 20 newest tracks of the week that you should know about. Um, you'll see then also this, the, so when I talked about the way that we separate ourselves from the other DSPs, one is the, the genres that we focus on. The other is the playlisting. And so we're going super heavy on playlisting. We've been doing this for about a year and a half, building out this library. And we are creating playlists for every kind of theme, moment, occasion, you know, anything that, you know, happens within the DJ culture that's relevant to, to us as DJs. So that means uh, focusing on things like themes, right? So these are the Halloween playlists um, versus, you know, building, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, including building out, um, you know, standardized playlists that have the latest releases from different genres. Um, here you'll see these are throwback acapellas, throwback instrumentals. These are our essentials playlists. So this is like the Afrobeats essentials, rap essentials. These are all like the latest uh, records that you should typically know. Viral essentials. These are all like the TikTok records that are hitting right. So and personally, I don't know. And you're don't constantly, know shit about the and I'm sorry, you're constantly updating the acapellas, right? You're going to get new ones and you're just constantly just collecting and expanding the catalogs, right? Yeah. So these, these playlists uh, are evergreen. They're continually getting added to and uh, will continue to grow. So for instance, like Fleetwood Mac is hitting right now. So now this is on this chart. Mm. Um, and so literally there are over a thousand different playlists that we've developed and we'll continue adding every single week. Um, we've also got a top 10 chart, which shows you the current most played records by DJs. And we'll get a little bit more into that when we, when I show you the integration, um, you also see the latest releases here, right? So, you know, essentially it's a music store. And again, this was the first version of it, um, of, of the BeatSource product. And we knew it was nothing groundbreaking in the sense that, you know, there's other services where you can go and get the latest music from, but the magic is with the streaming integration within the DJ software, right? So with that said, um, what I'll do is launch up Serato right here. And so this is Serato 2.4, it's their latest release. Uh, it's no longer in beta, so it's an official version. You can download it and play with it safely. Um, and what you'll notice is that there's a beat source directory here. And so I'll kind of just walk through um, how you can use this within Serato. Um, first, to get beat source into Serato, you just go to the preferences, library and display and click show streaming services and the four streaming services that are integrated with Serato will show up. So uh, there's Beatport and BeatSource. You'll just select BeatSource. You can log in with your credentials. You can also, even if you haven't set up an account, you can come to the screen and you can um, create an account from directly in Serato. So now that I'm logged in, you'll see that the BeatSource directory is there. And um, first I'll show you guys what, how you can search the library. 
So you'll notice there's a B right here, this, this uh, icon next to the search bar. If I toggle that, what I can do now is search the entire catalog. And so if I'm looking for Drake, I can type Drake. And here's all the Drake records. Now you'll notice I've played some of these, so they, you know, they show the different color. Um, and one thing to say is that because we're an official DSP, fully licensed, we're getting the entire catalog from these labels for these artists. So it's not like with a record pool, if you guys are accustomed to using a record pool service, that's for new music only. So, you know, especially with a service like DJ City, you'll never find music that's older than about a year, a year and a half, right? At most. Mm -hmm. With us, with BeatSource, just the entire catalog. So you're not just getting the, the new Drake releases, you're getting the entire catalog here. And you can find any single record that you want, load it up, and right there, it loads super quick, you're good to go. Um, now, another cool thing is you can add all the metadata to the track that you would to a normal file, a normal MP3 in your uh, collection, right? So I can set cue points, I can set loops, I can adjust the beat grids. I can change the names of loops. I can do flips. I can do. Uh, I can change the comments here. So if I wanted to add a comment like "This is my shit," you could do that. Um, you could change the BPM. So you can adjust anything, and it will uh, retain that information to that file. So even though this is streaming content, you can still treat it just like it was a uh, regular local file. Um, so here you'll see if I load up Laugh Now, Cry Later, this is a record that I've been playing with. I got all my cue points. I've even changed the names of my cue points. I got my loop set, just like it's a normal track. And you saw how fast it loads, right? So once you've loaded a track, it actually caches in the system. And even though it's streaming content, it will even it will load even faster uh, on the second time. And then, then you're good to go. Um, so personally, I quick mix the shit out of records and I've been using this in my workflow and it, it works. It's not like I have to change my mix style, um, to account for the music. So it um, caches, so it can load faster, but it doesn't offline, does it? So it's a good question. Uh, yes and no. So actually as it's cached here, you'll notice, let's load another record, right? If I load this now, once the overview has been built, it's technically cached in the system. Now, if I'm playing right now, I'm playing on Wi-Fi. If the Wi-Fi is a little shaky, even if it cuts out, mm -hmm. that track will play in entirety and not drop out because it's okay. cached there. So you never have to worry about the Wi-Fi um, affecting the audio playback of the record. Now, as far as offlining a track, that feature is not currently available in Serato, but it is coming um, and it is in our other software integration. So I'll actually show you that to you guys in a minute. Um, but right now it's not currently in Serato. So, just to kind of show again the catalog again it's not just new music and it's not just you know hip-hop or or house music if i needed madonna i could type madonna and here's all the madonna records hey styles can i see your uh, bob james uh catalog that's a good test <laughs> let's try it wow let me see okay so not good mm. yeah Interesting. not much right yeah, and then you so, can you can toggle through. You can um you can uh, select artist or album or BPMs, right? In any search. Yeah, if you went here, you could do it by that. So to this point about Bob James, though, just so you guys know, the the library is, is growing, and we're af actively adding more content, right? So the reason we don't have Bob James is because we haven't secured that content from his label yet. Mm -hmm. So just so you guys know, this is something that our curation team is working on every single day, right. building out the list of content that we don't have, and basically. To be fully transparent with you guys, what we did is we went into our own Serato crates and we're like, let's build out a content library based off the music that we collectively as DJs have been playing for hundreds of years, right? Because our team is built out of completely, you know, veteran DJs that have been doing this 20, 20 years each, right? So, you know, we're using our experience as DJs, what we know is like works, the content that we need um, to get into this library. And so for this example, this is something that's probably on the list already but it's just a matter of us getting the content into the library. Interesting. Um, so, okay, so yeah, you can search the content. And also to that point, we are, this is not like something we're trying to ignore or sweep under the rug. We are actively, you know, trying to find this content. So we've actually set up an email, requests at beatsource.com. And if you as a user ever can't find shit that you're looking for, we always encourage people to let us know so that we can go get it. Nice. Um, so, you know, pretty simple how you can search the catalog there and find records and play them relatively quickly. Um, 
Now, if I move down, you just see this top tracks folder. And if I expand that again, that's broken down by those six genres that we're focusing on. Now, what this shows currently are the most streamed tracks using BeatSource Link. So these are the tracks that DJs are actually playing in real time. Now, this is super interesting because it's based off data. And let me kind of preface all this by saying, you know, because we're a streaming service, we are doing a number of things when DJs play uh, tracks using BeatSource Link. Number one, we're paying out to the artists and the publishers for those plays. So when I just play this fake love record right now, uh, Drake and whoever owns publishing on that record is going to get a percentage of that, uh, you know, stream. And we're doing this with every single play in the library, basically. So this is super exciting because this has never existed before in the DJ world, right? Whereas DJs, we play the MP3s, um, we download them from the record pools, we, we play them in the clubs, but there's no revenue that's generated back to the artist and there's no data that's generated back to the artist and the labels. With this, not only are we paying out to the artists and the publishers, but we're also capturing all these data points. Like we can tell what part of the song DJs played, what part of the world they played it in, what time they played it in, uh, what play, played it at, um, all these different data points, just like uh, the streaming services can capture that data, like a Spotify, right? Um, so this is super interesting because now we can kind of share that data with the artists and the labels and it incentivizes them to fuck with the DJs now because now they can kind of show, number one, they're generating revenue for their artists and number two, there's data that they can use for marketing their artists, right? So uh, these charts are super helpful to both the DJs and then to the artists and labels themselves, right? Because as a DJ, if I don't know shit about reggae and dance hall, I can jump in here and now I've got a good springboard uh, to jump off of what DJs are actually playing, right? These are not billboard charts. These are not like general consumption charts, right? Wow. You know, sometimes you look at like a, a billboard chart, and there's like ballads and there's shit that like DJs would not actually play. These are all records that are getting played in real time. Wow. And this, these charts get updated every single day. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's uh, the top tracks. And, and as part I, of the deal, all DJs are like consistently submitting data in the background without knowing, or is there like, would you like to upload your data to BeatSource? <laughs> no, it's all, done it's all done natively when you play. So basically, you know, as I play these records, that data is being sent back to us. Uh, now it's all anonymized. So it's not like we are pinpointing who it is or anything like that. We can't see any of that information, but we get general outlook at what's happening, right? Well, you can tell like the country or some shit like that? Yeah, we could tell the country. Um, so yeah, I mean, we can look at, it, we can get pull cool, like, you know, anecdotal things from that, right? So if we can tell in the USA uh, on a Saturday night at 1 a.m. that all DJs are playing this record, that's interesting. That kind of indicates that's a primetime record, right? Um, but then so, it loads the top tracks and then even more DJs play it, right? So it's a bit of like, like a self-fulfilling prophecy at some point, right? <laughs> It's a little bit, yeah. I mean, what's what's going to be interesting is as the user base grows, that data is going to become um, more interesting, right? And so currently, you know, if I go to here, WAP is number one. That makes sense, right? You also see here, Gin and Juice is number three. So, <laughs> well, that means DJs that are using BeatSource Link right now are playing Gin and Juice. So... <laughs> So, but as we grow and as that as that user base gets bigger, that data will get a little bit more reflective. And who knows? I mean, you will start to see records that are not going to show up on other charts, like you know, obvious hits, and you know, take it or leave it. That that's kind of can be interesting, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Maybe they're playing on um, Snoop Gin and Juice because this is birthday today. A lot of people are on Twitch. Streaming. Oh, there you go. Wow. They're doing like Snoop sets all day today. Yeah. Good observation. That Good observation, Nev. Yeah, <laughs> pull that one out. Yeah, the biggest song in the club would drop it like it's hot, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, so those are the the top tracks charts. Um, and then one more level down, you'll see the the my playlist folder. Now, when you load up um, Beat Source Link in Serato, this is currently empty. And this is another feature that Serato is going to be adding very shortly, which is um, our curated playlists that are automatically served to you when you log in. Serato doesn't have that feature yet, um, but it's going to be coming in a new update. And what those are, are um, a, a hand-selected playlist that we're automatically giving the user. Actually, I'm going to show you guys Rekordbox right now, um, just so you understand what it looks like. So this is very similar. The integration is very similar. And you'll notice they've got the search, the top tracks, and here's the beat source playlist. So 
So this is what's going to be added to Serato um, very shortly. But again, it's broken down by those six genres. And what I can do is open them up and you'll see that these are playlists that are automatically generated for you. So right off the bat, you know, you got your classic house, your bass house, your moment on, um, all that content. And, you know, this is just an easy way for brand new users to get access to content right away without having to save playlists from the site, which right. is what I'm going to show you guys right now. Um, and, you know, just to give you an, a, a look, you know, these get pretty niche and pretty detailed, right? So here's the Dia de los Muertos playlists for Halloween. These are all Halloween Spanish records. I don't, Jamie, you might have to fact check that, but, um, <laughs> you know, you can get pretty deep with these uh New Jack Swing, Motown, 2000s r &Bs. And again, these are just a handful of playlists that we have on the site. Um, so if I go back to Serato, you'll see that. So that's going to be coming, right? Those beat source playlists. Instead, what we have are my playlists. And these are currently playlists that I've saved from the website to my library. And you'll see there's a shitload of them. I got my golden era hip hop, 80s rock, Moombatone, Dumbo, you know, doo -wop, freestyle, dubstep, Motown, 90s southern hip hop. And again, these are all playlists that are on the site. And the way that we anticipate DJs using that is if I'm here on the site, let's say I'm, uh, I'm on the playlist page. And so again, this is just a handful of some of the playlists we have. This is our Learn to Mix series where it shows you um, easily mixable records, just if you're a beginner DJ. Here's the uh, club opening and primetime series where we've got club opening and primetime sets for hip hop, pop, dance, reggae and dance hall. Um, here's a little Halloween jump off. We've got rock music. So even though we don't have rock in the genres list, we've got a ton of rock in the catalog, right? So here's your classic rock, your yacht rock, your 80s new wave. Um, where's that sample from? So these are, you know, if I click in here, you'll see that these are house records and then the original song that was sampled, right? So Diplo samples 702 Stilo for this on my mind record. Um, purple disco machine sample the emotions. I don't want to use your love, lose your love, right? So the way that we're kind of programming these playlists is with this DJ mindset, right? Um, and then if I go down, you got these road podcast battles, right? So the guys have been doing the uh, the battles on Twitch, um, super fun. So we've now started to uh, create playlists for each of those. So I can jump in here and get all the tracks from their 1990 to 2000 playlist, right? Um, so cool. There's a bunch of playlists here. And the way that it, uh, we, you know, we anticipate users using this is if you want to find these playlists and add them to your library immediately, all you got to do is click save the library. So I'm logged in right now. And if I'm just going to grab a couple of these, I'll take the pop hits, the eighties new wave, and then let's come down and get these road playlists. We'll get hammer faith Evans, YG in the game. We'll get this produced by little John. Uh, produced by Rick Rubin, right? So, and let's just do this uh, Afrobeats anthems. So, uh, Styles, you yeah. you can't access. Will will uh, will you have to log into the site to access the playlists, or can you just uh, access them through Serato later on, and just add? Uh, so, through Serato later on, you'll be able to have access to those playlists that we're automatically sending you. Yeah. But you won't be able to find all these playlists through Serato, like I am right here. You have to do it from the site first. Okay. Um, so what I did right there is I just found what, like eight different playlists, save them all. That's like hundreds of records right there, right? Mm -hmm. So if I go back into Serato, you'll see that, you know, these are all my plays that are saved. Now, typically you would have to exit the program and restart it in order for those playlists to appear. But we found a little bit of a workaround, which is all you need to do is um, if I eject this track, I'm going to go back to the streaming services um, box and just turn it off and on. So if I turn it off and on, and now I go back, you're going to see all the playlists that I just had. And so um, instead of having to quit the program, you can do that in real time and get all the music right there. Oh, so if someone asks for like a request per se, and we don't have it, we can do this in real time while we're DJing, go back, refresh, and then it, it should populate. Yeah, but that's only, this is only for the playlist. If somebody was requesting something from you in real time, it's like you would just click the search and you would type in, whatever their request is, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So if they're looking for, I don't know, Meek Mill, you could type in Meek Mill and, uh, I see. Okay, I got it. and play it this way, right? Okay. Yeah. Now, that that little hack I did was just for playlists, just for well, saving playlists okay. in real time. I got you. Because 
honestly, that's kind of the, the dopest workflow because immediately now you've got all these tracks in here, right? Uh -huh. So these immediately become part of your library. And um, Crooked, to your point, you know, I know you've been asking about the instrumentals and the acapellas a lot. So, you know, we have your Faith Evans versus Little Kim. And you'll notice we've got the instrumental for most of the tracks here. Nice. Stop. So it's just a matter of if the, the, the label actually has and can supply it to us. Um, so, again, you know, we, in, we want people to be on the site, finding all these dope playlists, saving them. And then immediately you can just start DJing with them. And again, I can just load up a track set my cue points and I'm off to the races. Um, I have a now, question about the data. So, sorry to interrupt. Yeah. Um, so obviously when we're playing from the beat source database, you get all this data. What if we're playing the MP3s that are just on our hard drive? Does that also send back metadata? No, no. The only data that we can capture as beat source is uh, through the files that you play from our service. Got it. All right. And, and then how much of this information of the data that you collect is going to be distributed to the labels and whatnot? That's to be determined. We're still building out that dashboard for them. So I don't know exactly what that data is yet. Mm -hmm. um, that's, uh, yeah, that's coming soon. And do you think there's going to be uh, an option for DJs who are on BeatSource to, um, to not be able to have the data accessed by beat source or that's that's never gonna that's always gonna have to be an option i think it's always gonna have to be an option as part of our terms of services opting in but again it, it's all anonymized so it's not like we're capturing personal data and like selling your personal data to third party you right know, i mean I, I think it's only fair if you're using files from beat source that they get data you know? yeah, yeah. They it's similar files, to any streaming I the files in real time i mean something's got to give but <laughs> I feel, you know, I feel more comfortable knowing that all my other files are not accessible to beat source in terms of data collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. No, we won't be capturing any of that, actually. Um, yeah, it's the same if you think about a Netflix or a Spotify, right? They're, they're tracking your usage as well, mm -hmm. and they are re reporting data on that. So, um, okay, so, you know, you can, you know, get our playlist and immediately start DJing with them. Now, another few things that you can do is kind of tailor those playlists to your own needs, right? So if I click here, this is my library. And what this shows you are all the playlists that I've saved to my library. And what I can do is I can jump in here and click on any playlist and edit it, right? If I want to tailor this to my own needs, um, let's say all I, all I do is click edit and now I can change the name. So if I want to call these Afrobeats, sorry, it's for Saturday. I can do that. Oh, what happened there? Okay, so now I've saved that. I can also rearrange this track order. So unfortunately within Serato right now, uh, just to show you guys, you cannot, if I'm in a playlist, you can't rearrange the order of these tracks internally through Serato. Mm. It's a limitation of the software, but they might fix that in an upcoming release. Uh, but what you can do is do it through the website. So if I'm back here, I can now change the order of these tracks however I want. If I want fall number one, then we'll have all those other tracks. And let's say we get rid of um, killing them. I don't want that track. So I can make those edits. I change the name here. I can click save. Now, if I go back to Serato and I'll just do this little hack trick again where I turn it off and on. Now you'll see it's Afrobeats hits for Saturday. Number one is fall. And that other record that we removed is gone. So, you know, you can work from the website and it will speak back to Serato. Now, what's cool about Serato is you can actually do stuff internally here and it will speak back to the website as well. So now if I wanted to change the name internally through Serato, I could do it here. And I could just click Afrobeats, it's I like. So we're going to change the name that way. And... Um, unfortunately, in Serato, you can't rearrange the track order, but I can remove tracks from this playlist. So if I want to get rid of these five tracks here, I can just remove them like it's a normal crate. And now if I go back to the website, back to the playlist, now you'll see it's Afrobeats hits I like, and those tracks that I had removed are not there anymore. Now, one more cool thing is that if I click edit again, you'll see that there's this public toggle. So right now, this playlist is private. This is tied to my account. Only I can access this playlist. If I click this and click Save, now this URL I can share with my DJ homies, my clients, my family, my friends, or whatever, 
and they can also access this playlist. So we're going to build out this, um, this whole kind of structure of being able to follow and, and share playlists. But what we anticipate is like, you can kind of become a tastemaker as a DJ, right? Now you create your playlist, you're the curating it, you share it with your network, your friends or whatever. And now it's like a dope source of, um, you know, curation specifically for your brand, whoever you are. Um, you know, if you're an entertainment, if you're a mobile DJ, you got an entertainment company, you can create these playlists, share them with your clients, share them with your DJs that work for you. I mean, there's a number of different ways, you know, that this could benefit. Um, you, can, you can create the, the opening playlist for your opener. <laughs> you know? yeah, right. Stay right here, my boy. Just stay yeah. right here. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's a, there's a couple of different uh, you know uses out of that. Um, now, also you can create playlists directly from the website. You know, if you wanted to, if you were on the go and didn't have access to your your Strato, you know, you can come over here and create a playlist. I can call this um, I don't know Drake hits. Um, now I can go edit, add tracks, and now search for Drake. So now I've got all these Drake results. I can select all these tracks that I want, add it to this playlist. Now I'm good to go. So, you know, um, just so you guys know, we're gonna we're in the process of you know improving all this functionality as well. We're gonna build out the UI, we're gonna deliver a mobile app so you can do this stuff on the go. Um, all this stuff is gonna be improved on over the next you know year. Um, so you know, that's basically, you know, in a nutshell, how you can get all our content, get it in the system, start DJing with it right away, tailor it to your own needs. You know, one of the cool things is because this catalog is so deep, um, just the discovery is, is amazing. Like you can come in here, if I click here into this playlist. Now, if I wanted to search by label, I could click Aftermath Shady here and now pull up the entire catalog from shady aftermath wow um so you know it's exciting because it's again more access to more music than it's currently available on any kind of record pool um you know you would have to go actively search all this music download it put it into your serato whereas now i got all that content immediately right here and again you know any changes that you make to any of these tracks will you know stay there tied to your account so can you create um, can you create your own playlist uh, through Serato or you can only do it through the yeah. site right now? No, great question. So you can do it internally through Serato as well. So all you got to do is click this button up here, mm -hmm. this plus um, streaming, yeah. right? And now you'll notice at the bottom, there's a new playlist. And so now I can jump in here and call it Drake Tracks for Saturday. And now I can come over here, search for Drake. Right, I pull up all my Drake. I want to add all this content in there. Now I got my Drake playlist. And, and then you, again, and can you pull? You can pull songs from existing playlists, right? From BeatSource playlists into yeah. your own playlist. Can you drag yeah. uh, like MP3s from your own library into them as well? No. So that's the limitation. And again, that is tied to Serato's. Um, interface you cannot mix your local files with your streaming files got it um some of our in other integrations you can do that and we've uh let serato know that that's a feature that we're we've requested mm -hmm. and so i think i believe they're working on it that's you know something that should be coming in a forthcoming release um if i was in record box you can do it you you can create playlists up here and you can mix your streaming files with your local files interesting okay yeah and um, with uh, respect to the new streaming playlists, right now you only have a beat source, uh, I guess, drop down menu. If you had a SoundCloud or a Tidal, or where would that playlist drop? So with Serato, you can only have one streaming service on at a time. Got it. So you cannot have beat source and uh, SoundCloud, SoundCloud open at the same time. Right. Yeah. You have to choose one or the other. Some of the other integrations we're, software um, partners we're with will allow you to have multiple. Uh, you gotta tell Survival to level up here because all I keep hearing is some of these other integrations. Some of these, you'll be a map of light. All right, Serato, if you're listening, man, level up. I will say Serato knows that we, we we talk to them all the time. We request all this stuff and they're working on it. So, all right, all right. you know. That's my people, so let me not shit on them. Yeah. No, they're on it, and it's a, it's a lot of development work. And, you know, just to kind of step back a little bit, you know, BeatSource itself is a content 
you know, library streaming service, right? But the different services that we're integrated with have their own UIs, their own, you know, workflows. And, you know, the way that BeatSource works with those UIs is all dependent on how they build their libraries and, and their software. So, um, you know, we definitely hear you. We make the same kind of request to them and I believe it's going to be coming soon. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think the last thing I'll show you guys, um, and we can jump into questions or whatever, is that offline locker, right? So, again, it's not currently in Serato, will be coming soon in a, in a new release, but I'll show you how it works in Rekordbox just so you can understand. So, I'm back here in Rekordbox, you'll notice the same kind of like layout basically, but here you see offline locker. And currently, my locker is zero out of 50. My plan allows me to have 50 tracks in my locker. Now, um, if I wanted to put music in there, all I need to do is let's go to my playlist here. I'm going to click, uh, let's do this feel good vibes playlist, right? And let's just say I want these, you know, five tracks, five or six tracks right here for in my locker. I'm worried about the party I'm doing later. Their Wi-Fi sucks. I just want to make sure I have these offline. All I got to do is right click and go store offline. And these will get saved to an encrypted folder on my hard drive. Um, and again, this is an encrypted folder, so it's not like I can go into that folder and, and burn them to a CD, put them on a USB, share them with anybody. These are, you know, stored, in, um, locked in this file. But now I can come in here and all these tracks can get played even without the Wi-Fi. So if I kill the Wi-Fi right now, I can still play them back to back, mix with them, no issues. Um, you'll you, see there's a little... Can, can you play them directly from the playlist? If they've been uh, saved on offline, or do you have to go to a the offline locker? Do you do you understand uh, what I mean? Yeah, that's actually a great question. I don't know the answer to that. Oh, okay, um, I have to look into that. I believe you would still probably have to play it from the locker, mm. but that's a good question. I'll look into that because it might just pull it. It's the same file essentially. So yeah. actually, here let's yeah, look. Technically, it should. Let's look because we were in the feel good vibes. Actually, yeah, it'll yeah, play it from okay. the playlist. Okay. Yeah. Because okay, you see this check mark, that check mark designates that it's offline. So right. you're good. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So you notice, okay, now it's five out of 50, right? So let's say I do the gig. I'm straight. I don't need these records anymore. I can just select them all and right click, remove stored tracks. And now they're all gone. I'm back to zero out of 50. Mm -hmm. So the, the locker's capped in how many tracks you can have in it once, but it's unlimited in how you use it. So you could put in 50 tracks for Saturday's gig, take them out on Sunday, put in another 50 tracks for Monday's gig. And rinse and repeat. And is it like only one? You said you said something about a subscription. Is there yep. like another subscription tier? Yeah. You want more songs in your offline locker because yeah, you might need five hundred just to be safe. Absolutely. So yeah, let's. Uh, I'll show you guys the the main marketing page here, and that walks through uh, the plans and what we talked about basically. So this is our main site. Uh, it's zoomed in right now. So this just kind of goes over everything we talked about. Um, you know. This library is built for DJs that play everything to, you know, handle any type of gig, all the labels on board. And we've got three different plans. So actually I'll zoom in there. So our first plan is, is Link, which is $9.99 a month. It allows you to stream everything in the library at 128 AAC. So we're using Apple's compression format, which is just as high quality as MP3, but it's a smaller file size. So 128 AAC is the equivalent of 192 MP3. So that allows you to stream at 192 MP3 and it gives you no locker size. Uh, the next plan is Pro, which is $19.99 a month. And that bumps you up to 256 AAC, which is the equivalent of 320 MP3, which is what we're all pretty much familiar with. Mm -hmm. And that gives you up to 50 in your locker. And then finally it's Pro Plus, which is $29.99 a month, same quality, and that gives you up to 100 in your locker. Now that said, we know that these locker sizes are limited. And the reason is because we're a brand new company, because we're paying out to the artists and the uh, publishers, we had to start with a locker size at this size because we frankly had a, no user base, right? Now the plan has been and, and will always be to be able to increase that locker size for our users because we know, I know just like you, you need to have way more tracks in there to comfortably play you know, a set all offline, right? Um, so that's something we're actively working on. And as we grow and as we expand and, and build our user base, our plan is to be able to increase that locker size. Um, and you'll notice again, it's only in these uh, integrations. It's not yet in Serato, but will be coming very soon. And these are the uh, current partners that we've integrated with. So you'll see mostly every major software. We've got a bunch or a couple more, I'm sorry, coming uh, before the end of the year. 
Um, currently we're in beta in Denon. And so, you know, just so you guys know, we're kind of where the DJ tech space is heading. These Denon units, like I got this one right here, it's Prime Go. They have Wi-Fi built in. So you could play all your tracks, all your B-Source catalog directly from the units without a computer. Mm. And that's going to be, you're going to start to see that more and more with these hardware manufacturers. Right. Um, so slow, slowly, they're going to start eliminating the laptop and MP3s, and they're going to have the streaming services going directly into the controllers or the mixers, and you could just basically log into your account via mixer or controller, right? Or through your phone, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we had DJs using B-Source this weekend in uh, Texas. Texas is open, so they're all playing. And we had dudes running it off their hotspot and was working fine. So, I mean, obviously, you know, internet connectivity and stability is only going to get better over the next few years. You know, 5G is coming. Um, so, you know, I know it's a, wear, a worry for some of the DJs, but the fact is it's only going to get better over time. And, you know, streaming content is going to be much more reliable, I think. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of it in a nutshell. I mean, you know, um, again, it's a, it's a developing product and um, we're still, you know, making tweaks and improvements and getting user feedback because, again, this, this service is built 100% for DJs. And so, um, you know, we're actively, you know, building the library, adding more content, um, but we think that this is something pretty exciting. And, you know, there's, there's a couple ways that I think that this can benefit DJs. Number one, for guys like yourselves that are veteran DJs, got huge collections, collections of music, been collecting for forever. By no means are we trying to like get you guys to ditch your libraries and use streaming services completely, like couldn't be further from the truth. If anything, this is just a, a amazing supplement to have and tool to have because the fact is we don't have all the music that there is. There's so much music coming out. There's so much back catalog music that's not available on record pools um, would require you to spend hours, you know, actively digging and, and, yeah. and getting. So um, we feel like this is a great tool for veterans. And then I think for beginner DJs, this is fucking next level groundbreaking because, um, you know, DJs get controllers, they get the DJ equipment and then they don't know what to do. They're stuck. Mm-hmm. And this is a great springboard to get them into the culture and get them playing the the music that they should be playing. Um, because if we can curate music like classic house music and freestyle and eighties and rock and all this shit for a new generation of, of DJs that otherwise would not be finding that stuff, they would not be, you know, they wouldn't know where to go. They wouldn't know what to do. Styles, um, I have a question. Yeah. Um, when new music drops, will you have it that day? Or maybe like, like, let's say if like a huge record comes out, will you have it that day? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, our team is on it just like we are with DJ City with the new record drops. We're on it. Um, Yeah, we got it. So like the Kanye record dropped on Friday, right? That, um, that Twitter release that he had, I think. Yeah. And so we had it that day. Um, Somebody was telling me they were DJing at a, at a party uh, using BeatSource Link and somebody came up and requested it from him. He didn't have it, didn't know it. And he found it in Link. So, yeah, I mean, that's on our curation team just to make sure that we got all the new latest releases. And you'll also notice, like, you know, we've talked about this in the past, but like, you know, the record pools are starting to get limited on the content they can have, right? Labels are telling them you can't put our content up. So a lot of stuff is missing. Um, we're actively, you know, addressing that by um, I'm trying to find this playlist that we created. Your... We actually created a, a playlist called Your Record Pool Doesn't Have This. Yeah, there it is. So this is like all the content that is actually not currently available on record pools because of whatever licensing agreements. Because we're officially licensed DSP, we actually have all this content. So all the Travis Scott stuff, all the Maluma, all the you know 21 Savage stuff that isn't on other record pools, we've got that content. Hmm. Um, you know, and aside from that, you know, the, our next move is just adding more of the, the content that you guys are familiar with from record pools. So like intro versions, transition edits, acapellas, um, you know, remixes, all that content's going to be coming as soon, uh, you know, as soon as we can get it in the system and get it fully licensed. And again, pay out to the, the rights holders. So, you know, this is, is super exciting for us because we feel like it's going to kind of revalidate the, uh, the DJ industry amongst the, the labels. Um, you know, right now it's, it's kind of like a, it's a weird 
relationship between DJs and, and record labels, right? Um, and a lot of that has to do with no oversight in the record pool space and no attributing of music uh, and revenue streams back to the artists. And so this kind of solves those issues. And you also mentioned that later on, you're going to get like extended intros and so on later, right? Yeah. And we've already kind of started to do it um, with a few different artists. Again, it's kind of dependent on the labels and the relationships with the artists. Um, but if I type in DJ edits, you know, there's a few examples. Um, I hate to show this guy as one of them, but his label's on it. So we've got the six, nine edits. We've got the intro versions, transition edits, um, you know, that type of content. Mm. And so that's something we're actively working on every week, basically pursuing these labels, getting them to allow us to create this content and put it into this attributed system. Because, you know, the problem is you've got 20 different versions of a record. If DJs are only playing this one and it's not getting attributed back to the rights holders, then there's an issue, right? So it's a complicated system that we have to kind of like develop, but it's something we're working 100% on. Dope, man. Thanks a lot, Styles. Is there anything else? Uh, that's pretty no, that's much it. it. I mean, if you guys got any other questions, I'm happy to talk through anything. I know it's kind of a lot. And it's, you know. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was good, man. I appreciate it. Oh, cool, man. We got to ask questions as we went along, you know. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That was very uh, informative. So I, I have a question about the data. So, like, the data you, got, you guys are collecting, at some point, if there's some, like, mastermind AI mm -hmm person who hates djs and he decides to i'm going to create <laughs> some type of uh ai dj and i'm going to pay beat source for all of their data on what tracks they're playing at what time and what what hits are popping is that a possibility or no <laughs> <laughs> you're always like so cynical but uh i mean maybe i don't know but <laughs> here's the thing look we, we you know we are we're, we're curating all this content and right. yes we're putting it in like these like easily accessible playlist and everything, but you still got to be a dope DJ and you still got to play these records the right way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, yes, we can all play the same 30 records, but I guarantee we're all going to play them differently. And so, I mean, there have been concerns of DJs, you know, saying, oh, you're making it too easy, but you know, that's ridiculous to me because it's like, you're still going to have to stand out. We still are wanting, you know, encouraging DJs to, to dig and find the gems and find the, the, you know, stuff to separate yourselves. And, What's cool about the catalog is it's fucking huge. This is a massive catalog. It's bigger than any other music source that you could kind of go to. I think it's a great tool for veteran DJs and any professional DJs. I don't think it's going to make an average DJ good, but it's going to create a lot of non-DJs and turn them into like average DJs. You know what I mean? It's going to be a level up. No business DJing. And so, I mean, whatever. Serato did that, you know, in 2005 to a certain extent. And before that, CDs did that, you know? So it's just, whatever, man. Strong survivors. Darwinism at this point, man. <laughs> We're still here. And so, yeah. Styles, man, I appreciate the tutorial. And then maybe in uh, in six months or so, we'll get more updates and, and whatnot. Yeah, for sure. I'll let you guys know when the next updates are coming. There'll be some big rollouts coming in the next few months. So, Okay. Thank you, Styles. Perfect. Yo, thanks, guys, for tuning in, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. This was great. Thanks, Styles. Yeah, right. most definitely. Thank you, Styles. Right. Thank you, Styles. Peace, y'all.